Hey, thanks for coming. Happy Census Day to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lori. Hey. How are you? Doing well. I think I see my dog, Yodi, in the picture. Hey, Yodi. <laughs> hey, Yodi. <What> <laughs> well, um, everyone, this is Lori Wilson. Like, I admire this woman so much. I've known her for years before she was the mayor of Sassoon. Um, yeah, she inspired me a lot. And she is the first African-American woman the mayor of Sassoon, which is dope. Yes, even in Solano County, which is crazy. But yeah, the first one in Solano County. Well, first female, not male, but first female. Yeah, excited about it. But Jamila, I want you to know how much I appreciate you and how you are such a strong person in our community and what you do for our children is awesome. And so you're one of my sheroes as well. <laughs> Thank you. Don't make me cry, y'all. <laughs> I follow you guys. I look up to y'all. I look up to y'all. You guys inspire me. So what we want you to do is tell us about your position and what you are responsible for. Okay. So what, like it's been said, I'm the mayor of Sassoon City. And so basically I oversee the legislative political side of our community and make sure that um, the needs of our community are addressed from a policy point of view. Um, I always say as a mayor, I meet a lot of people and meet all, in meetings all day, but one of the biggest things I think I do is I facilitate progress in my community. Yes, and you do a great job. I, I watch you on Facebook, do a great job. So how has COVID-19 affected your city? Like, how has it affected? Well, basically, our city is on lockdown. I mean, you know, there are lots of businesses are have had to close. Um, we've had businesses, um, our restaurants are open for takeout and things like that. But basically, we've had so many businesses closed. Um, and we have our kids at home because school is closed. Um, most people's jobs have are at home, whether it's telecommute or um, people are not employed right now, which is sad. But you know, it's definitely been impactful to our community. Um, people are feeling it. Uh, I think people are having a difficult time being isolated and um, being by themselves. Um, but there is a strong community here, and I've been able to see just great ways our community has pulled together to help people in need, whether it be our seniors or just the neighborhoods or the kids. Um, I have never seen more kids, people walking outside during the day, which is awesome, mm -hmm. and they're avoiding each other even in the walks, but it's nice to see people out and getting fresh air. I think that's really great um, for our mental health. It, it really is. It's, it is great, and then I think about the isolation piece. I decided to close my child care down because I have my son. I'm at risk. I, I you right. know. Um, but when he's with his father, I'm so lonely, and I'm just like... <laughs> well, that's the cool thing about Zoom, too, is that, um, you know, you can see people virtually and exist in a virtual <laughs> space with people, so you at least see them while you can't be next to them. Right. So, um, what lessons do you feel that COVID-19 has taught us? I think, first of all, all the things that we're doing to prevent COVID-19, like washing our hands for at least 20 seconds, um, you know, avoiding people who are sick, staying home if you're sick, those kind of things, I think those will stay with us. We should have been doing that anyway because of the flu and cold. But now I think people have that down. People are realizing how dirty surfaces are um, and wiping them down more regularly than they were ever before. I know even me, I have this thing called hashtag check your habits because I am finding I have terrible habits. Like I like to lick pages, you know, when I'm turning them <laughs> like that. So that's my little reminder. Okay. Hashtag check your habits, Lori. <laughs> you gotta do something different. So little things like that, you know, things that I wouldn't even think about it. I, you know, I have a hand sanitizer near me in every room or office because I still have to go to city hall. Um, and so I, you know, I just now have way better habits, I think, than I did before. And I thought I was a pretty clean person, but apparently um, there was room for improvement. So I'm assuming everybody's like that. There's room for to improve and to clean your habits. The other thing I think is people have learned a new way to communicate with one another um, and really check in. I think although we have the ability to be a deep, a strong sense of community before, we were all so busy with the hustle and bustle of the day um, that we didn't take time to connect. 
And I think we took that for granted. And now we, people are connecting in ways they weren't before. Um, the distraction is gone. So hopefully, I think that's one they'll say that we really do need each other and it takes a community to be healthy. And that's what we're learning with COVID. It's not just about am I at risk person or, or do I have a high immune system or I need to go out and get this. It's not about that. It's about how do I take care of myself and take care of my community and follow these rules so that my community is healthy. So I think, and especially for Sassoon City, what I'm seeing is a deeper level of connection amongst our residents and also a deeper ownership of um, it takes all of us to have a healthy community. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. So you guys hear that? Hashtag check your habits. Please <laughs> check your habits. Right. <laughs> so we're here today. Today is this it's official it's census, and we need people to participate. So what can you share with our listeners about the census? Yes, so I think one great thing about COVID is that people have been paying attention to data, like how many people are contracting it, where in the nation, how many ventilators there are, they're just paying attention to data. And I think it's proving how much of a data-driven society we are. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of the census, that's the ultimate data. I mean, we're getting everything we need. It determines how funds are allocated at the federal level, the state level, the city level, the county level. It determines what grants are awarded and where. I mean, it really is a way for um, our government to really be effective to us in terms of money-wise. And then secondly, I think of when I think of the community, people think, well, what does that mean for me outside of, okay, my government might get more money if I'm counted. But I think for community, it means you know you can advocate better because you have um, the data you need to be able to advocate better, to propose legislation, whether it's at the municipal level on up to the federal, and then just to be able to say, this is um, the community initiative that we'd like to see, and you have data to back it up yourself. So when you want to do some level of advocacy, you have information. All that comes from the census. And I know that there are so many people who typically aren't counted, like people of color, children, people will completely fill out that form and forget to include their children. Um, so it's important that we understand um, that everybody has to be counted um, because this is going to help allow us to have the funds we need, especially in Solano County. And I say especially in Susan City because we need support. Um, we need people to be counted. Yes, you guys hear that. Participate in the census. $675 billion will be yeah. allocated in different cities, and the government needs to know where that money is going to be spent, where it's going to be shared to, and it's up to us to participate. You're, you are important in this data, so when we're looking at this data, when they're looking at this data to see where this money is going to go, be counted in there, and please don't forget to count your kids. Exactly. And I always look at um, quality of life. I always talk about that in Sisson City. It's so important. Um, in order to be able to fulfill that and everybody have a good quality of life, we have to have resources. And um, being counted and getting the dollars invested in your community is the way to increase the quality of life for all of us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you so much for Thank everything. You. Um, I give one more shout out, not shout out, but like a little plug, shameless yeah, plug. Yeah, all of it, you got time. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been hearing um, so much from our community about wanting to get um, a more updates as it relates to COVID-19. Um, so in Sassoon City, we're gonna do a town hall every Thursday at 4.30 on Zoom. People can go to our Sassoon City website, my Facebook page, Lori D. Wilson, or our Sassoon City Facebook page, our PD page, our uh, fire page, and um, get more information. But every Thursday now at um, till 4.30, at 4.30, we're gonna do a town hall with myself, our city manager, and our um, chief of police and chief of fire. So I hope people will join that. You can get information, like I said, in online and all those places. You can submit questions in advance by the cutoff is at three o'clock and we'll answer as many as we can get through during that time period. But I hope everybody, um, who wants to know more and wants to know what's happening in Sassoon City related to this tunes in to our, our town hall with the mayor. Guys, tune in. Tune in. Anything else you could share? You could share. 
No, I just I am just so excited to see everybody coming together. And although this is um, one of those tragic times or challenging times, I'll say, you know, we'll we'll end out as a better community, a closer community, and our economy will be stronger. And I'm really excited um, for the next chapter in Salon County. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Children's Network, for putting this on. It, yes. This is this is great. This is 